In this video, I'll be going over why you should stay away from cheap, beat up, clapped out motorcycles. There we go. We got a couple bikes here. This one is the topic of today's discussion. The CBR, the rough little baby. So just to give you an idea of some of the issues, we have this that falls off. It's been down not once on this side, but twice over here as well. Uh, we have, what are some of the other issues? Um, busted taillight cover thing. Um, this is just messed up. The exhaust isn't centered as it is, uh, let's say with something like the Ducati that's nice, proper, that's not been uh, beat up and beat on. So hopefully you can hear something's rotten in Denmark with how this thing sounds. Maybe you can hear the brakes. They're a little bit crunchy. There it is. Oh, man, I hate this bike. There it is. Big time crunchers. Anyway, we'll switch to the uh, to the GoPro. We'll just take this thing off so it doesn't fly off at all, and get to recording. can see it rides I didn't uh, I didn't pull it all the way up because I'm I'm being more than a squid right now I'm wearing like ultra summery ultra light stuff so as you could see here uh, I mean it rides it's fine um, there's no wheel shake I could ride with no hands um, I didn't go all the way up to red line I didn't go too fast I think I got to about 60 um, a because I stayed on a on a neighborhood road that's probably not even ideal for 60 and then secondly i'm the squid of all squids i mean i'm sunning the thighs right now so i'm i definitely didn't wear any gear <coughs> i didn't even wear a helmet i know i know anyway the reason that i'm making this video that i'm hopping on here gave you this little test ride and talking about it is because i really regret buying this thing now i've had different budget uh budget 600s different budget bikes period and you can get into solid bikes for really really good deals if you look hard enough if you know how to negotiate and this one it was an astronomical deal it was $2,500 for a 600 sport bike that is 
the the bones of the frame of the engine of and the transmission of are stout but everything else sucks on this thing and i thought you know what it could be a like street fighter or not street fighter it could be um like a naked uh conversion sort of thing take off the plastics um and make it kind of like a cool rugged thing because i really like how 600s ride i like how they deliver power i love how it sounds especially back here with the yoshi uh yoshimura exhaust i really like the thing um but the issue that i'm running into is i don't feel safe on this bike like it needs front brakes and it needs whatever squeaky sound is going on when I hop on like this maybe it'll do it it needs whatever squeaky sound I know that's a weird shot to show you um, it needs that addressed before I feel safe and comfortable um, like really pushing this thing and so I've decided to sell it because I have other bikes. Um, I have the Ducati in the garage, the Ninja 650. They're both newer, they're both faster, and they just feel safe. This one doesn't feel safe, and it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of money that I personally don't want to put into it uh, to get it up to spec. And if I were to take it to a shop, then... If I were to take it to a shop to get all of these things done, it's gonna cost me an arm and a leg. And if I try to do it myself, DIY all of the jobs, it's just gonna take a lot of time when I'd rather be doing other stuff like getting marketing clients or um, just not working on the bike, not wrenching it. Modifying is fun, but fixing problems isn't particularly as fun in my opinion. Um, so that's number one, it doesn't feel safe. I mean, bikes are not safe, period. If you're looking at all the vehicles on the road cars trucks stuff like that a they don't see you and b there's just more risk of user error of issues of anything happening so when you get on a rickety bike such as this one and it just takes down the overall level of safety of assurance that you personally have as the rider that i have and secondly anyone else like a spouse a girlfriend a friend significant other anyone that cares about you they're already concerned about you being on a motorcycle. And then when you add on top of it that it's rickety, that it sounds horrible, that it has this weird clutch problem or that it has bad front brakes or that it has that squeaky frame issue, um, or not frame, but squeaky suspension. I don't know what it is. I haven't isolated it because I've never experienced it before. They hate that you ride as well. And they already hate that you ride because they care about you and they care for your life. So those reasons, coupled with now trying to sell it as is in the shape that it is. It's a running riding motorcycle. So it eliminates the people that are like, I want a full rebuild and uh, they want to pay like bottom of the barrel prices, thousand bucks for a not running CBR, thousand bucks for, I just need the engine and the trans for it. Well, it's still a running riding bike. It has working brakes, kinda. Um, it has, like I just went 60 on it. It proves that it runs and rides fine everything works fundamentally the bike is it's good and it's there so it should be sold as a running riding bike that's currently registered that's semi-operable on the road now if you look at other bikes like these on the market you would see prices here in this time of year um, ranging from maybe 3500 all the way up to five at the top end i would say this is a four thousand dollar bike with the mileage that it has if things were in good shape that's why i picked it up for 2500 thinking that it was a good deal I only posted it for 3200 bucks um and i've since gotten so much bs on it that i posted it for 20 or that i posted it for 3k um my break even on it is 2750 so that's what i'm shooting to get out of it i'd love to get three and make some money but i think if someone offered 2750 in the flesh um I'd take it maybe even less as time progresses if I get even more fed up. I usually don't take L's with the vehicles that I buy, uh, but this is a good lesson. Um, anyway, the people that are messaging me on this can't read, choose not to read. Um, like some of them, it's in a different language, so I understand why they're not reading the ad and they're asking me questions. Um, but then a lot of folks just elect not to read. They see the bike pictured well it looks decent i mean it has different colored levers but unless you're looking close at it it doesn't look like a bad bike um 
and then they just don't read the description, period. And they ask me what's wrong with it and why the price is low. And then I tell them the issues and they want to drop the price even further. See, if I would have posted it at 4K, I would have no interest. But posting it at three, I'm getting inquiry after inquiry after inquiry because people see the pictures. They say, oh, it's a CPR 600, double R, really good deal for what it appears visually to be with the mileage that it has. And then um, they see that it has the issues. They see that it's been down on both sides uh, and they want to negotiate like crazy. They want to talk me down the thousand dollars that I already discounted it on top, an additional discount for the issues that are already disclosed that I think are already accounted for. So I'm in this uh, not tough spot, but just painful spot of dealing with so much BS, which is not my favorite thing. Much garbage with so many games on this bike. There are other things like, let's say the Ducati. The Ducati, uh, all of them that I've had in the past, it's so easy because very few people are interested in the Ducati and it seems like all of the buyers are knowledgeable. They know what they're looking for. Um, and if it fits the bill, they'll inquire. If they have questions, they'll ask, but if it doesn't, they won't. So I get a couple inquiries. Um, no crazy low ballers, no crazy, um, no, no crazy games to play versus this, it's a lot of rats. A lot of rats that just want to go fast, which I don't blame them, because I used to be a rat. I still am a rat that lo loves to go fast. But so many frickin' rats that want to go fast for cheap that think this is a good out-of-the-gate bike. On top of that, there are so many beginner riders that see this bike, that see it's a little bit older, it looks still pretty good, and the price is 3K, which is a good starting budget. It's not too high, but it's also not unreasonably low. Um, to where they think this would be a decent first bike as it sits and it's simply not that um, And so I just wanted to hop on pace around a little bit show you how this thing rides tell you why I regret buying it uh, for the For the personal ownership experience side and from the selling it perspective this thing sucks. Don't buy clappers. I've bought bikes that have been dropped, that have been down. In the past, I've replaced fairings. I've ridden them. I've enjoyed them. It's not the, it's not the fact that the bike has been down or dropped before. Um, you can get a really solid bike for an even better deal buying something that has cosmetic scuffs. But when you get a clapper like this, just my fair warning to not buy it, especially if you're a newbie, especially if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. And unless it's just the, the best deal in the world, I would stay away. Um, I know for myself, I'll be staying away from, from these clap boxes in the future, unless it's something that's just a ridiculous deal. Like, I don't know, thousand bucks, 1500 bucks, which I don't think it would be. Um, something to beat up, to blow up, to destroy, not to daily ride. ride. Anyway. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you like it more than I like this bike. Um, drop a comment down below telling me what you thought. Did this video add a lot of value to your life, steer you away from buying a clapper bike? Or have you owned one in the past and you had a completely different experience or the same experience as I did and I'm talking about right now? Um, subscribe if you want to see some other cool bikes on the channel, other cool vehicles in general. High quality stuff, absolute clapper stuff. You let me know what you want to see. Uh, with that in mind, I will see you on the next one. Hey, really quick, one second before you go. If you're interested in getting lessons just like these, all of the lessons that I've learned throughout all of my years of riding, through buying bikes, flipping them, getting burned, getting the best deals, what to look out for, how to negotiate, everything I know on how to strategically and smartly buy motorcycles so that you can ride them profitably, then hit the link down below. Spoiler alert, even though I hated this bike, I still made money on it. So if you want to learn how to make money with motorcycles and ride for free, then there's a link for that down below. And on top of that, there are so many lessons about what to look for, what to avoid, all the common pitfalls and traps that you need to know as a beginner or an advanced rider who's been on the road for years and years. Anyway, that's it. See you later.